All right. My name is Corinne, and today I'm going to tell you all about what I wore when I traveled to Tennessee. Now, you may be asking, Corinne, why would you want to go to Tennessee? And to that, I would say there are three main reasons why I specifically wanted to do this trip. The first reason would be the clothing and the fashion history of the area. The second reason is going to be music and what music came out of those places throughout history. And the third reason is going to be food because I fucking love food. So when I was packing for this trip, I had so many of these thoughts and these like inspirations whirling around in my brain. I just wanted to kind of make a video that explained all of those inspirations and then explained kind of like the execution and what ended up kind of coming from it. So in order to tell you about this thought process and about kind of what ideas I was having as I was packing, I think we should all get on our thinking caps or should I say thinking hats because I've got one here that is extremely relevant to this whole concept. So let me grab it real quick. You should grab yours too. That's right, it's a cowboy hat. <laughs> but it's not just any cowboy hat. It's a cowboy hat made by Nudie's Rodeo Tailors. If you don't believe me, I'll show you the label inside the hat. Look at that, Nudie's right there. Isn't this insane that I have this piece of history? I'm just so, so pleased with myself. And I think it's just like, drama like this the crown height of this hat and then the brim like the way it goes up on the side this is insane this is the coolest hat i've ever owned nudie was incredibly important to the fashion of this like area and of the era that i've been looking at which is pretty much the maybe late 30s 40s up until the 70s 80s a very good resource to kind of understand the fashion of this area is this book called How the West Was Worn. So this book is by Holly George Warren and Michelle Friedman. So basically this book is just the, the meatiest source for all things Western wear. The text information is really amazing and I think like pretty much only exists in this book. And the pictures, the photos are amazing because they've actually documented the suits. They don't just put in the pictures of the famous people wearing the suits. They've actually got the suits documented, kind of like laid flat. And it's amazing to be able to get so up close and so personal with the detail on the pages. When I was kind of looking around, researching all of these places, I learned that a lot of these suits actually exist in the Country Music Hall of Fame Museum. And initially on this trip, I was only going to be going to Memphis because uh, I had more interest in the history, music, food, whatever that was coming out of Memphis. I was like, why choose? Like, I have to do both, obviously. So you know that my first stop was absolutely the Country Music Hall of Fame Museum. It's amazing how much of this information is actually left out of that museum because the museum focuses entirely on the musicians themselves and less so on the suiting, which I understand. Most people are going there because they love uh, Johnny Cash or Hank Williams or whoever. But I went there because I love those people and I also love what they wore. And maybe I love what they wore more. This book is, is a must for anybody interested in this like genre. It kind of starts with the beginning Western wear, like the people on the frontier and how the trade with the Native Americans at the time kind of influenced how things were going because they were using the same materials and, you know, Natives were making clothes for them. So they were using their own techniques and applying them anyway. So that's how it kind of started. It dives into the early Western wear, which is like more kind of what Nathan Turk was doing at the time. Um, very, very amazing embroidery, kind of like developed the signature style for like 
flashy western wear costume it's more of like an adaptation of like what people actually wore as sort of a functional thing and then there's an entire chapter on nudie which is our man who made this hat there's these amazing pictures of like i was saying the suits laying flat so here's one that elton john wore and then on the page across there's a picture of him wearing it this is also a beautiful one what nudie brought to the table was rhinestones he also brought sort of like a maybe it could be described as like a kitschier element something that's a little bit more literal to the musicians that he was clothing he's also most famous for doing elvis's gold lame suit which i also saw in person at graceland but i'll get to that later he's famous for a lot of things and he's the one that kind of created the rhinestone cowboy look Everybody was eating it up. I think all of the musicians thought it was very cool and very flashy. If you think about Nudie's history, he actually started by making thongs for burlesque dancers in New York. I just find it cool that his journey kind of led from something like that to making suits for like these really masculine men to perform in on stage and brought like a sparkle and like a femininity to all of them. The musicians provided the voice, Nudie provided the vision, and it, I don't know, in my opinion, it's the most beautiful thing to come out of like the country genre. Yeah, that's kind of that spiel. So yeah, this is one resource that I used when I was thinking about this trip. Another major inspiration for me when I was deciding what to kind of wear for this trip was Elvis, obviously. All of the musicians that came out of Memphis specifically, I mean, there's like Johnny Cash, June Carter, obviously like B.B. King, Little Richard, Roy Orbison, Jerry Lee Lewis, Isaac Hayes, Otis Redding, Booker T and the MGs, like all of these people. I looked through all of these old photographs of them and really just like kind of deep dove and I have a bunch of pictures I made like a, a Pinterest board for this trip because I needed to kind of like c collect and condense all of these thoughts into one place as I was saying one of the biggest influences fashion wise for this trip was Elvis Presley he just like had this look and his look changed you know in each decade that he was producing music so in the 50s it was just kind of like bold colored suits what i noticed is that there were like no prints usually it's just solid colors of like blues baby blues whites maybe like an all black moment maybe a, a tan moment or a brown moment he stayed in in the solid color world i'm gonna jump kind of to his 70s looks that's when he started bringing out the bling so to speak like he was in these amazing rhinestone jumpsuits for like the entirety of his life in the 70s his jewelry was amazing his giant gold rings diamonds big necklaces like he was just a fashion icon you cannot deny that but anyway he actually is from memphis grew up in you know in mississippi a little bit and kind of moved around a lot with his family when he was young he actually recorded his first stuff at this studio called sun studios in memphis and when i was looking for like literature stuff to read about him and his journey I found this book called The Last Train to Memphis, which is essentially Elvis's life in Memphis. And I thought, okay, that's so cool to just like have a window into his world and how he got his start. I mean, it's, it's amazing to look at like the pretty pictures of the pretty people in their pretty outfits, but to have a basis of knowledge for kind of like the, what was happening at the time culturally, and then also look into the tensions, like there was a civil rights movement happening. Memphis is where Martin Luther King got shot. You know, just like understanding the context for all of these people and like what they were doing, why they were doing it. This book was amazing to really understanding like why Elvis operated the way that he did. I don't know, it was amazing seeing how he was perceived initially. Like when he was younger in in like middle school or high school when he first started playing guitar, nobody thought he was good at guitar. Nobody thought he was talented, but they perceived him as authentic. And they knew that 
that whatever he was doing, it was because like he really wanted to do it and he really liked it. That really inspired me because there is something to allowing yourself to grow and allowing yourself to just kind of like trudge forward on whatever path feels right to you and eventually it'll stick. People will start to understand what's happening. Really beautiful story, really interesting read. I know biographies aren't for everyone. This one is just like the pace is quick. It keeps you interested, keeps you reading. I kind of like breezed through I think about half of it before I went and then when I got back I read the rest and I really understood everything a little bit more because I had seen everything in person and I could kind of connect the dots visually. So I definitely recommend this book Last Train to Memphis, The Rise of Elvis Presley by Peter, I don't know, G-U-R-A-L-N-I-C-K, Gurlnick, Gurlnick, yeah, it's amazing, it's a great book. The next book that I want to talk about is this one called Memphis Rent Party by Robert Gordon. So this author has written a lot of books and has made a lot of films about the music that came out of Memphis. Basically, it's just a book that has a bunch of really interesting little personal tidbits about a bunch of artists that came out of Memphis. If you go to the table of contents, there's a list. So for example, Sam Phillips is the first one. Jeff Buckley is one of them. Jerry Lee Lewis, all of these like very interesting people. And basically it's a book where you can just open up to any page, read about any of your favorite musicians and understand a little bit more about them. Robert does a great job of setting the scene for what you're about to experience, which was kind of my favorite part. There's a couple chapters that start with like the visual description of these musicians. When I was reading the Jerry Lee Lewis chapter, there is a paragraph at the beginning that reads, it's a December night and despite the chill, Jerry Lee Lewis enters the Sam Phillips recording service in Memphis wearing flip-flops, green and blue plaid pajama bottoms, and a loose nylon jacket with a casino's logo on the back. So that's just a paragraph from this book, but I just, I really love like the visuals that he paints in these chapters. And it's just a very interesting book. Yeah, that's kind of like the reading that I did before I went there. In terms of films you should watch, obviously the Johnny Cash biopic with Joaquin Phoenix, an amazing resource for understanding Johnny Cash's life. Obviously, like any film that Elvis Presley made, even the newer Elvis film that came out with Austin Butler. I watched Midnight Cowboy with Robert Redford, and that was an amazing film. He wore some of Nudie Cohen's clothing in that, and that film really inspired a lot of this journey. I mean, the list goes on. There's so much that you can think about and get excited about when it comes to Tennessee. So yeah, now that you have that intro, I'm gonna take off my thinking cap, my thinking cowboy hat, and uh, we're gonna move on to the rest of the video. Basically, how I'm going to format this video is I'm going to talk about the three main outfits that I planned and then I'm going to do just a tiny little segment after this about all of the in-between outfits that I used all of the pieces of clothing from the main looks to create and I'll talk a little bit about like how I figured those out and kind of what elements you can use to make your suitcase go farther when you're traveling but first let's get into these main looks. The first one I want to talk about is one that I wore in Nashville. So this was my first full day in Tennessee and I was in Nashville. I went to a couple museums. So I went to the Country Music Hall of Fame Museum, which like I mentioned has all of the country history, including a lot of nudie suits and a lot of suits by Nathan Turk. And the second museum that I went to is the National Museum of African American Music. That one was also amazing. Also within my Nashville trip, I went to the Johnny Cash Museum. So I wanted to reference a lot of the country musicians 
that either came out of Nashville or performed in Nashville, the people that I would be seeing at these museums. One of the big ones that I pulled from for this look specifically is Johnny Cash. He wore a lot of really beautiful black suits. He was the man in black. That was like his look. That was what he was known for and kind of the reputation that preceded him. I basically took three black suiting elements. I just had this pair of flared pants, a black wool waistcoat, and this velvet black tuxedo jacket that's from the 70s. Something that Johnny Cash also started wearing maybe more in like the 70s was ruffled tuxedo shirts. So in this outfit, I also wore a ruffled tuxedo shirt. I have this amazing pink one that has these black buttons that actually show through the ruffles on the front and I kind of accessorized it in a somewhat blingy way. I could have gone more but it was my first day in Nashville and I was kind of testing the waters. So I just put on some nice sparkly rings. I actually tied a little piece of ribbon into like a western style bow tie. Now that specifically is referencing the country musicians like Hank Williams, for example. And then in Nashville, I wore a pair of black loafers, which are amazing, but have since kind of broken. But for this outfit, I threw on this pair of black cowboy boots that actually have these silver studs that I got after I went on the trip. That was also annoying because I wish I had had these for the trip because they do fit in with all of my source images and all of the things that I've been loving about all of this. This look went over very weirdly in Nashville, I will say. In the Country Music Hall of Fame Museum, a little girl hid behind her mother and looked up at me and said, Mommy, why does she look like that? So there's one. Um, the other one I got while wearing this outfit was a man was kind of walking by me as I was like stood outside. He comes up to me and he's like, excuse me, miss. And I was like, yeah, what's up? And he was like, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what is this? And he gestured to the outfit. I think it was well-intentioned. He was literally just like asking me why I looked like that. Instead of just saying like a short, sweet answer, I literally listed all of my inspirations. And he's from Tennessee, he's not from Nashville, but he's from Tennessee. And he was like, I've actually never heard of any of those people. I mean, except for like Johnny Cash, you know, the musicians. He didn't know about any of the tailors that I was talking about or kind of like the cultural significance of the nudie suit anything he didn't know anything which is like fine nobody has to have the obsession that I do with clothing at every given moment but it was cool that also he just like genuinely was interested and listened to what I was saying and then the third one happened actually right before I got to the National Museum of African American Music this guy complimented me he said something like oh I love your suit you look amazing and then I said, thank you. And I kept walking and he said, what are you, some kind of waiter or something? <laughs> and I don't know. I thought that was funny. It was, it was interesting. I think people were maybe just a bit confused seeing something that they don't normally see. I think they just like genuinely wanted to know what was going on. It was interesting. It didn't feel super like warm and cozy. It was, it was a bit alienating, which is fine. The, the point isn't how I'm perceived. The point is I want to wear what I'm wearing and I want to honor these people that I look up to and am excited about. And so I was just going to wear kind of whatever I wanted to wear anyway, but it, it just was, it's just a fact. I was perceived in a certain way. And that's fine. So that's outfit number one. Outfit number two was the one that I wore to Graceland. I picked out this royal blue suit that you've seen before. If you follow me on Instagram, I wore it with like a white skirt at some point. As I mentioned before, Elvis wore a lot of solid colors. I knew I wanted to wear this suit and then the styling came essentially from Elvis. I just wore a white button up shirt with a white tie and then white shoes, and I brought a little white purse. Where this outfit kind of comes to life is the accessorizing. When I was in Nashville, 
I picked up a set of cufflinks that were perfect for this. They're the giantest, biggest, gaudiest cufflinks I've ever owned in my life. And then I also bought this like tiny little rhinestone tie tack. I also accessorized with a white flower kind of brooch on my uh, lapel. That was the Elvis look. Graceland itself was interesting. The house itself, like the Graceland mansion, was amazing. Like it's the most beautifully decorated home I think I've ever been in. <laughs> and some of you might be saying, Corinne, that home is insane. And yes, it is. It's like a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but beautiful decor. I'm obsessed with the mirror fireplace. I'm obsessed with all the chandeliers. I'm obsessed with the jungle room. Like give me wall to wall to ceiling shag carpeting. Thank you. Even just like the style of his house, like the, the sort of like foyer area was amazing the like yard he had stables an amazing house tour experience at Graceland they also have this huge kind of like warehouse complex across the street from the house that house all of uh like Elvis memorabilia so it's all of his cars that he owned. They have a whole room dedicated to his jumpsuits, which was what I was most excited about. So don't get me wrong, the jumpsuits themselves were amazing. I guess my criticism would be that they were too far away for me to see because they were stacked like three on top of each other. So I couldn't see the ones in like the top rows. And I also felt that there wasn't nearly enough information on the jumpsuits themselves, like what materials were used to create them, what were the stones that were set in the jumpsuits, you know, all of these things that I would find really interesting as somebody who is interested in clothing, but I think that maybe they excluded it because the majority of people would just be interested in sort of like the Elvis lore of it all. It was also very cool to see Elvis's accessories in real life, his belts. Oh my god, they're amazing. I would kill for one of those belts. And they had some of his rings, necklaces, all of the things that were touched by Elvis, <laughs> that were Elvis's things, were really interesting. But everything that has been done in the name of Elvis to kind of showcase Elvis was really poorly executed. So that's my review on Graceland. I will say that I did trip and fall while I was there in this suit on a staircase in Graceland, like in the house. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. I don't think that many people saw me, but I got up and I was like, for sure, a little pink <laughs> and stressed <laughs> because I was like, oh my God, I fell in Elvis's home. But yeah, I have a little hole in my suit pant leg now which is maybe the only way I would be okay with there being a hole in this suit is that every time I wear it now I just think of Elvis in Graceland so people at Graceland perceived me very positively as I was walking in there were these two kind of elderly women that were walking in I saw them eye me up as I was walking closer to them and then as I was passing them they looked at me and they were like, you look great. And I was like, oh wow, thank you. And you know, kept walking, that was a great start. I had a lot of really amazing interactions with the Graceland staff, actually. They were all like really sweet and definitely just like working their asses off and trying to manage all these tourists all the time. But a lot of them stopped and you just like said, you look beautiful in this suit, Elvis would have loved it, whatever. They were very complimentary and made me very happy because I felt like somebody got it. Somebody got like what I was referencing and what I was trying to honor and that was really cool. So, you know, success there. <laughs> that was my second big outfit. And then my third big outfit was when I went to Stax in Memphis. So Stax is a recording studio. Some of the most famous people that they've produced 
that you might know are Otis Redding and Isaac Hayes, but literally like anybody that was recording anything in the 60s and 70s recorded there. I really loved the museum. I thought it was very thorough, very well done, life-changing to go there. One of the coolest things I think that they had was Isaac Hayes Cadillac, which was a blue color and then it had gold literally like all around it and then it had white shag carpeting on the interiors and they had it on this like spinning platform under these amazing lights and it just looks so fucking cool they had a lot of costume stage wear that was worn by a lot of these people those exhibits were amazing i just loved going to stacks but my outfit for stacks was inspired by a lot of the musicians that recorded there like i said i was looking at isaac hayes a lot i was looking at otis redding i was looking at booker t and the mgs i knew i wanted to kind of ring it in with another suit and I have this amazing suit that's from the 70s that's sort of this like brown, coppery, it's a little bit shimmery, but it's mostly just a brown, like a warm brown suit. So I started with that and then I pulled from the color palette of a lot of these musicians and grab this shirt that I have from the 70s that has these amazing like knife collar, bright yellow. And then I picked out this tie from the 40s and I thought the colors, the sort of orange and the yellows kind of brought everything together. In terms of footwear, I just had a pair of comfortable brown loafers on. I think it was a hit. People were liking it. No specific insane comments or questions. I think they all just kind of understood what was going on. But yeah, those were my main three outfits. And then everywhere in between, I wore a piece of one of those suits with a piece of a different suit with another garment. The first look, which was the look that I wore while I traveled, I just needed to be comfortable. So I wore my most comfortable pair of pants and then I wore the yellow shirt that I was gonna wear to stacks and then my black tuxedo jacket in case I got cold. The next one was an outfit that I wore on a night out. I just wore a black tank top with the black vest that I wore when I went to the Johnny Cash Museum and then I just changed up the accessories so I wore some fun necklaces or a like gaudy rhinestone belt and then on another day I went to a couple like antique stores and then I just wore the shirt that I was gonna wear to Graceland kind of open with just like a white tank top again some fun accessories another day I was just like walking around Nashville and I wore the suit that I was gonna wear to stacks but with again tank top and a button up open with a different necklace you're kind of getting the hang of things here a little bit it's just that all you have to have is like some shirts like different shirts, not just button up shirts, like tank tops, t-shirts, etc. And a ton of jewelry. Just bring all of your jewelry and just mix it up every day. One day I actually drove down to Mississippi and we went to the Blues Museum down there in Clarksdale. I went to Lansky's, which is the shop that Elvis bought a lot of his suits from. The following day I went to Sun Studios in the morning which I think was actually my favorite tour that I took. It was an amazing experience. The tour guide was really engaging, very funny and very knowledgeable. I found out about musicians that I had actually embarrassingly never heard of. So one of the people that I found out about was this person called Howlin' Wolf. Oh my god, the music. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I put some of his music in the last video that I did. I don't know if any of you picked up on that, but I just learned so much and it was very cool to be in the actual recording studio that all of these people had stepped foot in. I don't know, just 10 out of 10 experience. But anyway, what I wore, I got these stupid little pictures of me, but you get the idea of the outfit. Again, the brown suit with, this time it's like a green and white t-shirt that I have, a bunch of jewelry, a brooch. And then in the afternoon on that same day, I went to 
the Civil Rights Museum, which was also one of the coolest and just like largest, most informational museums I've really ever been to in my life. I made a mistake and got there, I think about an hour and a half before they were closing for the day. So I was just like stressed about seeing everything and having enough time. And so I kind of like skimmed through a lot of it. Give yourself the whole day. If not, if not just like an actual chunk of time, like maybe four hours, five hours. So yeah, those are all of the outfits that I wore. I tried to cover everything. There's no way you can possibly cover everything in like a 20 minute video, but I will say the music, the performances that I saw were life changing. Some of the best live music that I've ever seen exists in the outskirts of Memphis. And Nashville was amazing too in, in terms of music. Um, the food, oh my god, 10 out of 10. There was amazing fried chicken everywhere. That combined with the, the history of the place, the clothing, everything, it was actually my favorite trip that I've ever taken. If you are going to Memphis or Nashville and you need recommendations, put a comment below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. So that is everything for today, for this video. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're thinking about things in a little bit of a different way than you were before. I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.